So I've been getting a lot of questions lately about many-to-many -many relationships, so I wanted to make a quick video about how to do them in TypeORM. Now I'm doing this in the context of using Type GraphQL and using it with a GraphQL schema, but this works no matter what you're using it with. So to start off with, I set up a example relationship. I did the standard many-to-many -many relationship you'll probably see, and that is author and book. So we can have an author who's associated to many books, and a book could have many authors. So here is what my entity looks like. I have a author entity here. I have a name and ID field. And you'll notice, again, I'm using type GraphQL, so we have some fields here. Uh, the other thing is this one-to-many thing, which we're going to talk about in a second. You'll see my field has, or sorry, my book has the same thing, a name and an ID. Um, and then there's this extra field um, that's also one-to-many. And then I have a author's field, which again, we'll hit in a second. So with type ORM, you have a few options of how to do many-to-many -many relationships. You can have type ORM just handle it for you. But what I prefer to do or prefer to handle it is to create the join table myself. And so what I'll do is I'll create a join table or another entity, which I call author book. So this is the thing or the table that connects the book entity and the author entity together. The reason why I like to do it this way is I find it easier to actually create instances of this. And then also it is pretty easy to add fields onto this afterwards. So if I want to add additional fields to the join table, I just add them here. Anyway, so in this table, what I do is I add two primary columns, the author ID and the book ID. So it's just connecting to the author and the book entities. And then here's where I set up the uh, relationship. So it's a many to one relationship. So this table is going to connect to many authors. Um, and then here, what we do is one, I'm saying the join column name. So I call it author ID right here. So I call it author ID right here. Then I say the entity that it's related to. In this case, it's called author. And then all I have to do here is say on the author entity, what did I call it? Um, in this case, I called it the book connection. Um, and that's how I get this author book on author. Uh, and so when I call it book connection here, on my author, I have to call it book connection over here. Um, and you'll notice I do it opposite, one to many. Um, and then I say, the type of this join table, which is author book. And I say uh, dot author is what I called it over here, right? So you just kind of have to put the relationship on each side. And so this is gonna return a promise and it's gonna give us an array of author books. Now over here, it's gonna turn an array of authors. Or actually, sorry, just a single author because it's gonna be a multiple rows. Anyway, I also add the primary, set the true, because it's a primary column. And basically I do the same thing with the book. So we say many to one with the book. Um, and then I say with my book type, I called it author connection. So if I come over to my book, we'll notice we have the opposite way. So that is how you set up the relationship. The next thing I wanna go over is just some basic operations you'll usually do with many to many relationships. And then we're gonna come back to what this field is about. So the first one that you're probably going to deal with is creating and adding things. So for example, here's how you might create a book and you might create an author. Now you'll notice I kind of split these things up into different resolvers. So for example, for my create book here, I'm only creating a book. Um, and I separated this into basically three different resolvers. So here we create a book, here we create an author. And again, very simple. We're taking a single argument. The name is a string. We pass that in and we save it. And then how do we actually connect them together? Um, that I have as a separate mutation, which I call add author book, which we take an author ID and a book ID. Um, I create that and then I save it. So what that does is it creates the connection between the book and the author ID or the author and the book I mean. And so if I wanted to, I could turn this into a single mutation if my client side or my front end required that. Uh, and we would just create the book, create the author, and then we would pass that to authorbook.create. Um, so we could just jam that into one if it need be, uh, but or sometimes you may need to split it up like this. This is just the requirements, depends on what your project has. So both of those you'll see. 
The other thing I want to go over is how to delete. So oftentimes you'll see something like this. Uh, you can probably set up something like this with cascade deletes too, but here's me just manually doing it. So for example, if I wanted to delete a book, how it would work is I would take the book ID as a parameter. I'd first delete, delete the row in the join table. So author book, we're deleting it, passing in the book ID. Um, so we're deleting all of the rows that are associated to this book. Um, and then we are deleting the book itself. And again, if we are doing with this with author, it would work the same way. We delete all of them with the author ID, and then we delete the actual authors themselves. So delete from the join table, then delete from the entity itself. Um, and then lastly, and this is where things are more complex, is with querying. So actually, it's not too complex. This, this one right here, right? That's very basic. So I'm only doing one side of it here. So I'm saying books, and we want to find all the books that we own. Now this is where when we fetch a book, we also want to know all the authors that are associated with the book. So I'm saying book.find, that's going to return me a bunch of books. Uh, one option is to actually just do a join here to actually also return all the authors. Or I'll often use data loader and load it later. So what I'm doing is using that. So in my book over here, I have this field which returns an array of authors. And what I'm doing is I'm saying authors here. I'm using this context um, to get access to the authors loader. So I'll show you that in a second, but that's data loader stuff. And we're returning an array of authors. So here I just say authors loader dot load and I pass in the ID for this book. So basically what author loader does or authors loader is you pass in a book ID and it gives you back the array of authors associated with that book. And so that's how we're actually going to uh, return the authors. And uh, what's nice about this is it turns this into a single SQL query, no matter how many books you're trying to fetch. But let's jump into what this author's loader looks like. So I made it over here. Um, what it does is it returns, I have a function down here, which I'm calling create authors loader. And it's an array, sorry, not array, but a function that returns a new data loader. And then the data loader, we pass in a batch function, batch authors is what I called it. We'll look at that in a second. I just want to mention where I'm calling this create authors loader. So I'm actually calling that in my context, which is right here. So in my context of the server, I call create authors loader. Um, and then I, I'm doing this on every single request. You create a new data loader instance. Anyway, so this is where it's a little bit more complex is the batch authors data loader. So this is what a data loader instance or a batch function looks like usually when I'm doing something that is a many-to-many -many relationship. So what's going to happen is we're going to have an array of books, or sorry, book IDs, and we need to return an array of arrays. We're returning a 2D array back because each book could have an array of authors associated to it. So the first thing that we do here is you'll notice we're doing a find command, and here is where we're using our join table, so author book, and we're first doing a join on the author table. So I say join here. I'm naming it, and I'm just using an alias. You can see it's just author book. And we're doing an inner join, and we're selecting the fields. So I say inner join and select. I want to join with what I'm calling it author. And then what I say right here, dot author is important. So this first part is the alias. So I pick the alias author book. So that's what goes here. And then dot, what, what, how did I come up with dot author here, right? So if I click on my entity, if we come over to author, sorry, book, author book, um, if I wanted to join on book, I would call it dot book. If I want to join on author, I do dot author. So whatever I name them here is what I join on. Uh, so back to my authors loader. So that's going to join these together. And then all I'm saying is uh, grab all of them and uh, find the ones where the book ID is one of the book IDs that we need. So what's this gonna return is something like this. So author's book is gonna look like an array of things that looks like this. So we have our author ID, our book ID, and then something that looks like this. So this, I'm not sure why they return it like this and it's not type safe, at least we don't know about it. I had to cast it to any, which I'll talk more about in a second. Uh, but when I return this, it just tells me I get an array of author books back. But because I said and select here, it also has the author 
associated with this uh, join table row item. But anyway, it's going to be a, a bunch of objects that look like this. We have the author ID, the book ID, and then because I joined it on the, the author, it's also going to include the author entity itself. So again, we can see the ID and the name. And so what I want to do is I want to loop through the author books, so each row in the join table, and I want to just create a mapping. So a book ID maps to an array of authors. Um, so this is where I'm basically creating the relationship or the, the data structure which we'll use to return. So we're first going to take the book ID as the key and then the, the value here is going to be the array of authors that is associated to that book. So I'm looping through. First thing I just check if the book ID is already in the map. If it is, we just push on the value. Otherwise, we're going to say we're going to create a new array. And again, we're just saying, all right, we found a book ID that's equal to this person's author. And again, I had to cast this to any because this type does not exist on uh, this. I'm not sure how to get it to actually know that it's on there. But anyway, after that, we have created this mapping, which we created in this for each statement. And uh, we just map through the book IDs. Um, and for each book ID, we look up the authors associated to it. So what that gets us in the end is something that looks like this. Whoops, wrong way. Is we now have the books and we can fetch the ID name authors and we're gonna get something that looks like this back if we run this. Oh, did I turn off my server? Let's do yarn start. Um, but when that starts back up, we're gonna be able to fetch the books and then for each book, we're gonna get be able to get an array of authors that is associated to that book. So here we go, book one, I have two authors associated to it. So I hope that gives you an idea or a starting place with how to set up type orm many-to-many -many relationships and how to fetch them using data loader. Um, and this code will be up on GitHub if you wanna use it as a reference.